Greetings folks. This is the scorched remains of a few little trees and an area of ground that I've piled some straw on and burned. I've done this I've done this to destroy, destroy the um, the fungus's breeding material, the Chilara fraxinea breeding material. I should have introduced myself. I'm Tim from Tang and I have a little forest. And forestry is about growing trees, not about making money. This, um, this little patch of land that I have ash planted on, it doesn't receive premium from the Department of Agriculture anymore because um, I decided to not go ahead with their sanitation action plan, which would have consisted of digging the whole lot up and um, burying them all in trenches. It would have caused damage to my topsoil and left me with unsightly trenches in the field and I certainly wouldn't have been able to identify resistant stems as I hope to do. So, by burning the ground under the um, infected stems and giving the infected stems a scorching, I should prevent any further infective material arising from my own forest. What I can't prevent, of course, is infective material arriving from outside. The little asexual ascospores that fly in the wind just fly in the wind and they're going to land on this field again next year. Now the section I'm standing in has just been shaped. Uh, the trees are all lovely and straight. They've had their side branches removed and um, hopefully the amount of leaf area has been reduced. That may help. It may not help. It may make the situation worse. It's experimental and in this regard I'm experimenting by I'm formative shaping it's called half of the field and I'm not formative shaping the other half and at the end of next summer as I see the affection progressing I shall look very carefully and examine very carefully what's happened and see which is doing better than the other and learn from it and proceed from there. A word to the hurlers. Well lads, how do you like the plastic hurls? Are they any good? I feel that um, you might be stuck with them for a while of course you could help with the ash dieback. <laughs> you might help yourselves by doing that. But that's a whole other story. You see, hurdy ash is scarce. Hurdy ash is hard to grow. You've got to get it just right. You want the little toe on the tree, just so. It's all about how you plant them, how you mine them. You want the straight stem to 1.3 metres. And um, a lot of inferior ash has been imported from Europe to make hurleys over the last 30 or 40 years. All the junior hurls and all the toy hurls and all the cheap hurls are made of imported European ash. But the best senior hurl has always been made from Irish ash. And it still will for a while, there's a lot of Irish ash growing. One of the things you can do as hurlers is to go around your local area and um, identify the men that's growing ash. Identify the potential stems for hurlies and Encourage the man to sell it as hurley ash to your local hurley maker as opposed to just thinning it and selling it for firewood which is easier but much less profitable. That's kind of all I have to say on that subject for the moment and that's the end of this little video.